All right, guys, time for a little recap. Uh, round two from our pre-market prediction. Let's take a peek at what happened. Um, if you missed our pre-market prediction post, link in the description, check in the bottom. I will link our prior video right to the spot where we were talking about this breakdown right here. So uh, in the intraday here, let's go to the five. You're gonna see our gap fill, uh, which is obviously a gap shy. And we are creating a higher low here into a push. And in the last video, we explained that anything over this 1618 was gonna go right to the 100 fib and then do whatever it wants to do after that. If we stayed under, we're gonna to go to the gap fill in the 50 SMA daily, which is this red dash right there and um, go for the fill. Now, the 50 is kind of catching up there quite quickly, uh, which is fine, so we gotta keep an eye on that. But right now, um, we're gonna talk about this uh, little beat. So we had a really crappy indicator pre-market. Uh, nothing was really going on but we're gonna use price level and we're gonna use a couple different uh, things I just wanna go over real fast here. So the Fibonacci sequence, the reset, right? These are what they usually do when they come outside the CPI range. And again, check the prior video if you don't know why or how we drew this here. It comes out of the 100 Fib, comes down to the 1618, and again, doesn't go to the 2618. We hold up at the 1618. We have a very high percent chance to pop back to the 100 Fib, okay? Now, we had, um, more than a few instances here and in reason why we were going to bounce. Uh, like in the video, we said Apple and remaining FANG. So as long as Apple bounced the 100 EMA, so if we go to Apple right here, this is going to be a daily representation, this neon green hard line right here, as long as the Apple held right here, this is the 100 EMA uh, daily representation. As long as it held that and held the bounce, we weren't gonna go um, too far. And then we also mentioned Tesla and NVIDIA. So if you go look at Tesla uh, for that pop gap fill this morning, and it just held sideways and chopped, no big deal. Uh, same with NVIDIA. So if we take out another box ticker chart right here, go to the old NVIDIA, and we had another huge move. Now, NVIDIA got pumped pretty hard this morning, so um, that was a given. So once that gap fill, uh, very minor uh, opening gap fill was kind of tackled there, you see this thing fly back up. And this got a news pump this morning, and we posted this in our chat um, to be watchful of that because it just had a, a monstrous amount of news. Let me scroll up, see if I can find a little bit of that news piece here. But um, yeah, NVIDIA's given the backdrop, it seemed clear that implied 7.5 billion quarterly center revenue. Uh, where was it? These are all three big pieces. It's a Morgan Stanley pick, essentially. So yeah, three to four uh, quarters is going to be the next pick by um, Morgan Stanley. And they're talking about the sell-off being a very good buy point. Now, obviously, we know when that happens. That's not true. So we did get a really big NVIDIA bounce point off that hype news, which is great uh, for the day traders there. So we said watch that bounce on the two weakest pre-market FANG stocks. We're talking NVIDIA and Tesla there. And that was uh, what we got. So now coming into... Uh, the rest of the confirmations, we talked a little bit about the VIX and so on and so forth. So I just want to cover this real fast for a small recap. And um, the VIX was $16 over under. So 16, that's big gold level right here. Uh, and if you know our chart, that is a uh, very distinct level. So VIX right at $16 uh, has a very big point. So once it lost 16, came back down. This is still this big bike gap that we need to fill on VIX. So this bounce can continue or at least continue to roll back up um, in sideways for a pop into data. Uh, tomorrow could be the one. And VIX needs to end up back down at the 1420 gap fill. If you guys missed that, we talked a little bit about the daily chart um, and how the VIX does not like to leave the gaps uh, prior to runs. It likes the gap fills and goes. So if you go to the daily chart here, and you can just look at a um, little minor history there of the VIX. And every time you see a little bit of a gap right here, failed, gap, failed, gap, failed, gap, failed. Every time you see those gap ups, fails, so on and so forth, right? Very rarely does it go back up. And of course, we do have some instances that do, but so on and so forth. Now, if we look at some of the ones that have gapped up and then filled, we had some volatility come in, right? Right here. Now, because we are coming into the middle of August into September, which is a volatile month, we are expecting the near-term VIX gap right here uh, to hopefully be filled. Now, of course, we already had a kind of a little start to the volatility, but this gap right here, that's all that's left on the bottom of that gap. If that decides to fill back up, hit that 50, that's gonna be our bounce breakout point. And into the end of September, we're gonna look for almost $18 plus on the volatility index as we roll into 
the volatility month of September. Some are really big short on September and uh, August. You can historically see that as a general consensus as well, just like July being very bullish. Each month kind of has its personality. So we're going to uh, continue staying locked into that. Hopefully the VIX does a gap uh, fill for us in the next day or two, even just a blip down and uh, fills that daily gap right there. And that will give us an opportunity to bounce that and shoot this market uh, right in the foot, right? So if you watched our last video, we're looking for that uh, gap potential fill all the way back up from the initial gap fill and then most likely lower high and all the way back down. Now, uh, we said it was most likely going to get chopped and pinned in our chat right here at the 100 fib, right? And that's what it did. Here's that 100 fib from the CPI that we had covered. So check out that last video and this, and that is the general play out and things that we had looked for in the oscillation to uh, give us those metrics. And this is where we ended up. So congrats to anybody who caught that one in our pre-market. I know a ton of our members ended up green today. So uh, that'll be that. So catch on the next one and we'll give us predictions into the data and see how we're at. See where we're at. <laughs>